Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris. This is Driven by Boost. And today, guys, uh, we just hit 800 subscribers. I'm very thankful for that, uh, especially as a smaller channel. Uh, it, do it does mean a lot, so I want to say thank you guys. Um, and if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, like the videos. Uh, it just really, really helps out, and it means a lot to me to keep pushing forward and keep creating content for you guys. Uh, so with that being said, uh, six months today marks the time when I originally got the Golf R APR Stage 3 Plus. So I've had a little time to drive it. I kind of know what it feels like uh, on the highway, driving around town. Um, so I'm just going to give you guys five things uh, that I wish I knew and don't like about the APR Stage 3 Plus kit. So guys, let's get into it. Alright guys, so before we get into the things that I don't like about the kit, let's kind of go over what the APR Stage 3 Plus kit uh, is involved. So what do you get? You get the Turbo Kit, uh, which is the EFR 7163 twin scroll turbo from Borg Warner. You get their tuning, so you get the, the APR tuning map, and you have to buy the fueling kit. So for North America, that's $1,500. You get the port injection with the low pressure fuel pump, and for the rest of the world, you have to buy the high pressure as well as the low pressure, and that whole kit is just under $2,000. So right off the bat, you're looking at about $7,000 for just the kit alone. And this really doesn't include supporting mods like an intercooler, uh, which could be up to $1,000 as well. Um, so that's $8,000 for the intercooler, the turbo kit, and the fueling kit, and an intake is also necessary, so that's a couple hundred bucks as well. So all in all, you know, it could be anywhere close to $10,000 that you're looking to invest inside, inside of this kit. Um, so that's a lot of money. So let's, uh, let's start off with reason Number one, why I dislike the APR Stage 3 Plus kit, and that is turbo lag. Now, the EFR kit, uh, it spools about 500 RPMs later than the OEM IS-38, which isn't terrible, uh, but guys, it definitely is noticeable. Um, and I've owned, I've owned several of these cars that have had turbo upgrades. I've owned the GTI, the Mark 7 GTI with the IS-20 turbo, I was stage 2 on that. And that turbo was so small, there was little spool time, it was super peppy, uh, but it just died up top. Later I went from an IS-20 on the GTI to an IS-38, and that again shifted the power band to the right. So it was a more touring feeling, but I lost all that low end power that was fun and just felt like it was super peppy. And this was kind of the same thing when I got into the Golf R. Uh, I had it stage one initially, went stage two, and it was perfect. It had a lot of pep around town. Um, but later, when I went into stage three plus with the bigger turbo, I lost a lot of that low end grunt that made it exciting for daily driving. Uh, but I did make it up up top. So you know, you get the power back. You just have to ring out the car a little bit more to experience it. And it's not a bad thing. You just have to understand that the power comes on differently and it feels different. So you're going to lose that low end punch. Which brings me to my other point is that when the car is in drive mode, it shifts sooner. So it, it, you know, this car's DSG. I do have the APR tune on the, on the DSG. But when you're in drive mode, guys, it shifts sooner and it shifts faster. So the car never really gets a chance to, to build up the boost. So you're always under boost, and when you're in drive mode, it feels slower than it did in stage two. And, you know, it's, it's not terribly slow, but it definitely feels like a slower driving car when you're just in normal drive mode. Now, when you put it in sport mode, it's, it's a whole other story, um, but drive mode definitely just feels sluggish around town. And that's just the reality with going with a bigger, bigger turbo and having it spool on way later. Alright guys, so this brings me to reason number two. The kit doesn't come with program switching. 
So right now the car is tuned for 93 octane. And in order for me to run any other fuel, I have to retune it. I can't run, you know, 100 octane race fuel. I can't run um, 91 octane. So if I don't have the fuel that I need, I'm stranded. And that's kind of a concern. So it puts you in a mindset where if you're on a road trip and you're making plans to go somewhere, you have to know what gas stations have what fuel, or you could be stuck, or you could risk hurting your car, which you just invested a lot of money in. So it's kind of upsetting that uh, APR has this kit, and you can't program switch on the fly. Um, and so it's, it's definitely something to think about if you have unreliable gas stations, or you take trips where you, know, you don't know what kind of gas you're gonna be getting. I don't know a whole lot of what else is out there besides APR Stage 3 Plus Kit, but I know there's other tuning companies that do offer different program switching on the fly. So, guys, this brings me to point number three. It's no E85 support. I know a lot of other tuning companies uh, have a, like a flex fuel type setup where you can run E85. Um, you just feel like there's a lot of untapped potential when you can't run 85. It's cheap. Uh, by me in the Midwest, it's always available. And you spend, you know, $2,000 almost on a fueling kit and you still can't run 85. I just feel like it's, it's kind of disheartening in a way because you kind of want to run 85. You feel like there's more power to be gained by 85. Uh, it's available and it's cheap, but you can't run it. But yet you just invested money into a fueling kit, which doesn't support it. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but I just it was just something that I wish APR had included in this kit, was the ability to run 85. Okay guys, reason number four, and that is a huge loss in miles per gallon. Gotta give compliments to the chef. All right, let's boogie. I'm not saying that the Golf R is the most fuel efficient car in the world. I didn't buy this car for fuel efficiency, uh, but it is nice uh, to have uh, good gas mileage, especially when it's light on the wallet. Stage two on highway, I was getting over 30 miles per gallon. Now that I'm APR stage three plus, I'm seeing closer to 24, 23 when I'm on the highway and around 16 to 19 when I'm around town. And I guess for me, the reason why this is, is you are, you know, have an upgraded fueling system, so you are dumping more fuel. Um, I'm also running the APR Pops and Bangs map, uh, which how that works is it actually adds a little fuel into the exhaust chamber and that ignites. Uh, so that tune does decrease your gas mileage, but it shouldn't be that noticeable. And the big thing I believe this is, is because with APR Stage 2, guys, I didn't have to ring out the car and bring it all the way up to 5,000 RPMs to feel that power, that addiction, that, that, that power that pushes you back in the seat and the excitement. With the APR Stage 3 Plus kit, I have to bring it to 5,000 RPMs. I have to ring off the RPM band to kind of feel the power. So I'm using more gas to feel the same or similar excitement than I was at Stage 2 levels. Now, don't get me wrong, the feeling of the kit at high RPMs is a much greater sensation of speed than the OEM turbo was tuned. But it's a trade-off. But literally guys, I'm always going to the gas station now, even on my short commutes, it feels like I'm always filling up and it's filling up way more frequently than I did when I had my stage two car. All right guys, so this brings me to reason number five. And that is, you just get used to the power very quickly. I know after going from stock to stage two, it, I felt like it took me a while to just kind of even get used to the power. Like it felt new and it felt exciting for a long, long time. Going stage three plus, it felt almost as if within that same week I, I got used to the power. I mean, I don't know if that's bad to say, but 
in my mind, it's partly due to the fact that I'm just constantly not flooring it around town to get the same effect. Um, and it goes back to the spooling. It's just, you just, you don't have that same low-end grunt. The torque isn't built up low to feel that fast sensation that you did with the OEM turbo. So you got used to the power very, very quickly, and then soon it started to feel sluggish. You're just not as peppy than what you were originally used to. And it's not a bad thing. And every once in a while, when you do get the chance to open it up and to floor it, you get that burst of excitement and you feel like a little kid again. But the reality is, for daily driving, you don't get a lot of opportunity to just let her rip. There might be a few stretches here and there every now and again. But for a daily driver with roads that I, you know, I personally commute on roads that go up to 35 miles an hour, and it's kind of hard to send a stage three plus golf R and feel that excitement when you know you're gonna be breaking the speed limit every single day and it's just not practical. So it's fun when you get to open it up, but the chances to do that, to feel that power are not as relevant as the amount of times you get to do that uh, when you're on the OEM turbo. And that's kind of how I feel with, with the way the kit is set up. And overall, guys, I'm not trying to hate on this kit a lot. These are just things that I've come to realize with ownership over the past several months or so. Um, I think a good option to look into this might have been um, a hybrid IS38 Turbo. I know a lot of those kits are out there right now. Uh, they cost less, and they actually are producing similar numbers, if not some even more, depending on fueling, than the APR Stage 3 Plus kit. So that's, it's definitely something to consider, guys. I mean, there's a lot of good options for this platform. Uh, there's a lot of good ways to make good, reliable power. Uh, I've had no issues with this kit. Um, it's just some of the things to think about. So guys, if you are hoping to get APR Stage 3 Plus, 3 Plus kit, so guys, if you are looking to get an APR Stage 3 Plus kit for your Golf R, for your GTI, uh, for your MQB, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope these points uh, were able to stick with you. At least make you, maybe think about other options, if not continue with this kit or not. I will be posting a video shortly about my top five favorite things about the APR Stage 3 Plus kit. So guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. So Adriana, what's hmm. the difference between APR stage one, two, and three? Okay, stage one goes vroom, stage two goes vroom vroom, stage three goes vroom vroom vroom, pepity pep pep pep. <coughs> hold back all the things I feel. If I hold back, maybe they're not real. What if I don't and just let you do? Would you go? Let me know, so oh, oh. What if I just lose?